for the layperson, we're talking about an artificial coma, I suppose, rather than, if I can put it uh, so crudely, a, a natural coma. What's the distinction? Well, that's, it's a very profound distinction. A natural coma means, effectively, if somebody's not able to wake up and they're not coming round, and that's obviously a neurological condition in itself. An induced coma is something that we'll, the doctors will actually in, instigate to keep the brain at rest, and it's very different. So actually what Michael Schumacher has been in so far is actually the induced coma. So he's not really been in, in the coma as we all understand it. It's actually very, very different. So it's actually an artificial state. So it's actually there to protect the brain. But it, it just gives the brain some time to recover, and we know uh, from what, in the initial phases, we were learning from clinicians that there were a number of lesions, there were uh, two surgical operations to remove blood clots, but I suppose we deduce from the fact they are reducing the level of sedation to, to bring him round, uh, that, that that period of uh, rest for the brain is, is uh, judged to be uh, fit to come to an end. That's right, exactly, exactly that. So I think it's, it's obviously good news because that means that the doctors there are not worried about swelling anymore and they're probably not worried about the acute medical com complications and the initial aftermath of the, of the injury. And obviously they're confident enough with his recovery that, that are actually the one to now reverse the sedation that has been on for, for, for a month and a day, as you said before. Uh, so it's actually a really a step in the right direction. Uh, the phrase that's been used is that the sedation levels will be slowly reduced. Uh, what, are the, what are the perils of a procedure like this in the sense of reducing sedation? It has to be done very slowly because actually what, um, what sometimes you, you see in a patient is some, someone becomes um, agitated or uh, very restless and they may be sort of pulling the tubes out, for example, which obviously would be dangerous. Um, the, other, the other complication that you may see is that somebody who's been in, in an induced coma for, for, for this length of time may not be strong enough to breathe for, for themselves. So actually uh, what we do is to bring somebody around very gradually and sometimes you have to go backwards a little bit so that's why it's, sort of a, it's a bit of a trial and error process where you, one day you may reduce the sedation and maybe increase it again the following day. It's because, obviously, if he wasn't strong enough to breathe for himself, they may have to support his breathing for a little bit longer. So there are some dangers, but obviously this is a, sort of, if you want, an important milestone in, in his recovery.